peace, stress free, let it be. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name's Ashley, and today we have another sewing video. But before we get into that, I wanted to tell you why I am so, so, so excited today. <laughs> but as many of you may know who have been subscribed to me since like January, or if you were subscribed to me around like May, around my birthday, my goal for this year in terms of YouTube was to get 100 subscribers, right? And we passed that on my birthday back in May. And now, today on October 26th, which is when I'm filming it, sorry, that's not when it's posted, but today on October 26th, I hit 200 subscribers. 200 subscribers. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's like insane to me. I, I can't even, I don't even know. I can't even like wrap my head around the fact that I have 200 subscribers. That's so wild. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that I would have 20 subscribers, 100 subscribers, and now 200 subscribers. That's so like wild to me. So I am so, so excited because of that. And I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who's subscribed to me, who's been subscribed to me, who's been supportive of me, who likes my videos, who comments on my videos, all that good stuff. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You don't even know, like from the bottom of my heart, thank you and I love you and <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, this sewing project that we're gonna be doing today is the result of a lost package. As I've said before, I mostly prefer to thrift the majority of my clothes. It's just better for the environment. So I thrifted this super cute denim pleated skirt from Poshmark. I got it, I think, for like 12 bucks. It was like a children's size, so it might not have fit me, but I asked for the measurements and it seemed like it would fit me. So I was really excited, anxiously awaiting for it. Poshmark does two-day shipping and it didn't come in two days. Then like a week passed and the seller actually opened a case with USPS. Nothing happened, so they refunded me, thankfully, which I'm so appreciative of. But I really wanted the skirt. <laughs> so I opened my own case. I've actually opened three cases with the USPS over this package because I really want it. But it's been like a month and a half and just nothing has happened. So I figured I'll just make my own. And this way I know that it'll fit me and I can make it like the length that I want and it's just more like custom. So I've been talking for a little bit but that is what we're doing for today's video. Let me get all my stuff ready and I will be back so we can start. So I have everything ready. I just need to take a few measurements first. I'll have it in the description down below like which measurements you need to take just so that it's like you can find it really easily. But I actually got most of these like math things that we're going to be doing and just the instructions in general from I think the account is like Vintage Thirsty on YouTube. I watched their video which inspired me to just make the denim skirt that got lost in the mail. Well, let's take those measurements and then we can get started. Disclaimer, I'm not a professional. And this is my first time making anything remotely close to this, so this is more of a trial and error than a tutorial. So first I'm taking my waist measurement, I'm just measuring around my waist, and to get the full length of the fabric, you're gonna take your waist measurement times three, which is an insane amount of fabric, but you need it, the pleats eat it all up. I'm using this skirt for reference because it fits me really well and it's the same style. Uh, so I'm just taking the length from the bottom of the waistband to the bottom of the skirt. This was 13 inches. The length can be whatever you want though. It's totally up to you. Now I'm counting the number of pleats because to get the width of each pleat, you need to take the full waist measurement times three divided by the number of pleats, which I couldn't do off the top of my head, but here's me using my calculator. That's what it said in the video that I watched, but when I did it, it said my pleats were supposed to be like four inches and that seemed really too wide. And when I actually made it, they needed to be way smaller. So I'm not entirely sure on that. Now I'm measuring where I'm gonna sew down on the thing. To do that, you take the distance between your waist and the distance between your hip. And mine was about 3.5 or four inches and it was the same on the skirt, so it was confirmed. I'm also gonna be using this zipper and button for this like style that I'm making, but you don't need to. Now I'm just measuring around the waistband, which it was actually a lot bigger than my actual waist, so that was a little bit confusing, but I'm not really sure. And I'm also measuring the width of the waistband, which is about 1.5 inches. So that's all the math for now, but there's more coming up, don't worry. Now I'm just measuring out my fabric. Mine was 78 inches, but actually when I pleated it, it was really small. Um, so I ended up making another one that was like 86 inches, I think. And I'm also cutting out the waistband. I think it was like I did four inches by, I wanna say 34 inches. I'm also rewatching the video because I could not remember how to like put the pleats together. But here I am marking my half inch seam allowance. I'm watching the video again to see how to put the pleats together. So now I'm just marking every two inches because I wanted two inch pleats. Again, they ended up being smaller. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. This was a mess. I'm sorry. But 
yeah i'm marking every two inches on the top and the bottom and then the way that you put the pleats together i'm going to show you in a second so say you have the first three lines right you take the first line and the third line and you stick them together so that they're like kissing and the second line is just in the middle and you just do that all the way down i did it top and bottom so that i made sure i had like straight lines so once I finished this, I actually put it around my waist and it was like way too small. So this is when I cut the 86 inch piece of fabric and ditched the 78 inch. Um, and then I pleated that, here it is. But it was still too small, it was like just barely touching. So I went and made the pleats a little bit smaller. I think I made them probably about an inch and a half. And there's Noodle, she loves to lay on top of all of my projects. Even when they have pins in them. <laughs> so I just went and I ironed all of it the pleats down just so that they would hold and they wouldn't be moving all over when I was sewing them. And then I measured about four and a half inches down from the very top because I wanted the line to be three inches. In retrospect, I could have probably made it about an inch longer and I think it would have fit better, but that's fine. So I'm just pinning along that four inch line. So now we are going to do some more measuring. We're gonna take the measurement of our waist and take the measurement of our hips take the difference and then divide the number of pleats by that difference. So mine was the number of pleats divided by 10. This is kind of hard to explain, so bear with me, but basically it was about 1.7. I decided to just round down to one. I know that's a big round down. Um, and then at that line where you are sewing down to, you're gonna move the fabric over that measurement, if that makes sense. Um, and that'll just make sure that your pleats aren't straight down, that they're more like fanned and they're fitted specifically to your waist to hip ratio. So this is me trying it on and it fit perfectly here, but it actually ended up being too big. So I should have stuck with that 78 inch fabric. I bought these denim needles and this jean thread with the hopes of making like a thicker contrast stitch because that's what I was looking for and my regular needle doesn't do that. So then here I'm just switching my needle to that denim needle and I'm just sewing a straight stitch across the top just so that I don't have to have the pins in the way and nothing's like sliding around because it's not pinned. And then I'm just sewing down that four and a half inch line on all of them. And I actually ended up going over this twice because I wanted it to look thicker and I really like that I did that because it gives a good contrast to the next line that I'm going to be making. So I just did that on all of the pleats and cut off all the strings. So as you can see, I sewed down that line and now we are going to take the fabric along the pleat, not sewing the fabric underneath, just along the pleat and sew down like that. Is that confusing? Yeah, I'm going to do that for all of the pleats. And I'm also going over the other things a second time, the top ones. So I'm just sewing all the way down, cutting off the strings. And this is what it looks like. I tried to make the bottom hem though, and then I realized that those were going to get in the way. So I seam ripped all of them out after all that work. Um, lucky for me, I love seam ripping, but mistakes do happen. And unfortunately for me, they happen a lot because I rush through things and don't take precautions. So now I'm just pinning the bottom hem about three quarters of an inch because that was the seam allowance that I left. And I'm sewing along that bottom hem. I'm trying to get as close to the side, like to the edge of the thing where the hem is as possible. And I'm really trying to do a straight line, a nice like clean straight line. And then I went back and re-sewed all of those things that I seam ripped out. <laughs> This project was pretty challenging for me because I loved the contrast strip with the dark denim and the like gold thread, but I suck at sewing in straight lines, so it was pretty challenging. Um, here I'm putting it on and as you can see, it's way too big. It's like overlapping. I have no idea. I don't know what I did, um, but it's way too big. I also pinned on the top part, but that's not important. We'll get to that later. So I seam ripped out where I was going to cut it. I drew the line where I wanted to cut it and I cut it. 
So then I pinned the zipper on and poked myself a lot throughout this whole process. I literally have holes in my hand. Um, anyway, I pinned the zipper on and made sure to tuck the unfinished seams underneath. As I was doing this, I realized that I've never actually sewn a zipper before and I also realized that I don't have a zipper foot. So this was going to be a challenge, but I did it anyway. Just use a straight stitch going right along the zipper so that it's a nice clean line. And also making sure that the unfinished seam like stays on underneath. I cut the strings off, I tested the zipper, and it worked. That's so exciting, because I've never sewn a zipper before. <laughs> so this is going to be the top band. I had a half inch seam allowance, so I just tucked those in and ironed them down so it was easier to sew. As you saw, I had it pinned before. I tried to sew it and it was all lumpy and just not even, so I thought that this would be a better way. And then I folded that in half, obviously, because it's going to be folded in half over the top part of the skirt, and I ironed that down so I have the crease. And then I just ironed the pleats so that they laid nicely. Now here I am pinning the band on. It fits so much better than the one that I was using before. It's not as lumpy at all. Um, and it's also even on both sides, so go me. <laughs> And I'm just using a straight stitch all across that, trying to stay as close to the edge as possible while also getting the front and back fabrics tucked in there. And I'm just turning it around and going back over the top. So I did the top and the bottom top stitching, both of them, yeah. <laughs> and then I tried to make like a little pointy thing at the end and it just didn't work, um, but that's fine, you can't really tell. <laughs> So now I'm figuring out where I'm going to put the button and that's where I'm going to put the button. So I'm marking how big the button is so that I know where to start my buttonhole. And thankfully my sewing machine has buttonholes on it, like I can make buttonholes. So I picked number 30 which is this nice rectangle. And then I'm switching to my buttonhole presser foot. Um, and what you do is you put the button in the back to get the size of it because that's important to know how big to make the buttonhole and then you put this thing down and what this does is it stops it from moving beyond the size of your button and this literally took 30 seconds to make this buttonhole which is awesome so here it is and I'm just gonna put a seam ripper through the middle of it careful not to rip the stitches though and then I hand stitched the button on threw it in the washer and dryer and that's it so here's the final product. So yeah, here it is. I'm actually really happy with the way that it turned out. I did not think it was gonna turn out this good. Obviously it's not perfect, but for my first time making anything like this, I think it turned out pretty good. One thing that I should have done is wash the fabric before sewing with it because it did shrink. So when I put it in the washer initially, it was like a lot too big on me right here but then i put it in the washer put it in the dryer and it actually shrunk to fit me uh which i totally forgot that denim shrinks so then the fabric around the zipper actually shrunk like what i sewed it to so now the zipper is all like wavy so i should have pre-washed my fabric uh, but i never do that i know you're supposed to do that but i never do that so uh i don't know maybe i should start doing that <laughs> to be honest i think that this is the hardest thing that i've sewn like remember that bucket hat that i sewed if you've like been here for a few months um i tried to sew a bucket hat that was hard this was extremely difficult but i think it could go a lot better now that i know what i'm doing and the mistakes that i made so i've definitely learned from this a lot but just in general most of the things that i sew don't take me more than like a day day and a half this actually took me like two and a half days but this is it i'm actually like so happy with the way that it turned out i can't believe that i made this it's wild <laughs> yeah so i guess that this is it for the video thank you all so much for watching if you like this video or if it was helpful in any way or whatever or entertaining give me a thumbs up down below so i know make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss upcoming videos and if you really really like this project then leave me a comment down below and let me know i love comments i respond to all of my comments so let me know. So thank you all so much again for watching. Thank you so much for 200 subscribers. I still can't believe it. It's so crazy. <sighs> wow. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. It means the world to me. And yeah, I will see you all next week in my next video. Bye.